On today's show, Cafeteria Redo, the new chair of the math department, fall sports are up and rolling. And so is Jared. Good morning, Staples. Good morning, Staples. It's Thursday, September 24th. I'm Anna Bede from Period 8 TV production class. We look forward to bringing you our show which will start right after the pledge. Come on, Nathan. Come on, lucky seven. Oh, oh snake eyes, damn. Please stand for the pledge. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we said last week, there are a lot of new faces around Staples. Eli and Andrew caught up with one of them last week. Good morning, Staples. I'm here with uh, Mr. Hill, the new um, head of the math department. And we're just going to ask him a few questions about um, you know, him and what he likes to do. Uh, so where did you go to school and uh, where did you teach before you came to Staples? Uh, well, I was a graduate of Bethel High School. I was in Bethel from fifth grade to my senior year. And after that, I went to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, uh, where I graduated in three and a half years with a bachelor's in mathematics and bachelor's in psychology. I fell into education, got my master's at the University of Bridgeport. Uh, the rest is current history. Uh, how are you enjoying being here so far? Well, it's still kind of early yet, but um, so far everything has really been great. Um, the students have been fantastic. My teachers are okay, I guess. They know some mathematics and reasonably decent at conveying that information. Oh, they're fantastic. What do you like to do in your free time? Free time? You'll have to define this for me. I'm unfamiliar <laughs> with this concept. Um, I, in all seriousness, um, when I can, I do enjoy reading. Uh, predominantly nonfiction, philosophy of science, psychology, mathematics, mathematical history, um, ideas like that. Um, but also, I occasionally enjoy fiction. I'm a fan of Dickens and other classic works, Poe, big on Poe, uh, very uplifting guy. Um, uh, I also enjoy my Netflix and hanging in my man cave with my PS3, uh, so another one of my close personal friends. What kind of stuff did you do this summer? I did manage to find some time to sneak away to uh, Dublin for eight days, which was very nice. Um, beautiful 68 degrees maximum weather. Um, but a very gorgeous country, and um, definitely worth to see if anybody's interested. Yeah. But, uh, All right, thanks, Mr. Hill. So nice meeting you, and I hope you're adjusting you, well to the position. Going well. Welcome to Staples, Mr. Hill, and if you see him in the hallway, make sure to say hi. Jake's task for this week's show was to find faculty members who had some information they thought was important that we know. We found two, so listen close. Good morning, Staples. Now we turn to Ms. Weinberg for special library announcements. Hi. We just wanted to remind you that if you took out a book for the summer, those books are now due, so please make sure to bring them back as soon as you can so that you don't incur too many late fees. And we wanted to let you know that we do have a student help desk here in the library, so if you do have some issues with connecting to the network or software problems, the students here might be able to help you, so please stop in. It's right in the middle of the work zone, so come on down to the library. 
And as far as your own devices, please remember to label them. We do have um, Sharpies so that you can put your name on them down here in the library because some of them do look similar and we want to make sure that you keep your own device. Thank you. We met with Mr. Jolly to talk about the upcoming changes to the SAT and the PSAT. Good morning, I'm Mr. Jolly. I am the person responsible for organizing and administering the upcoming PSAT test. This test is the first time that we've ever given the PSAT during school hours. It's no longer given on a Saturday, for at least for this year. We give it October 14th in the morning for all interested sophomores and juniors. Uh, the actual schedule for the day hasn't been set up, but the test will be in the morning hours beginning at 7.30. Tickets are on sale now until Friday, October 2nd. So we still got some time left to buy tickets. They're $40. They can only be purchased during lunch periods in the guidance office. So all sophomores and juniors are welcome to take this test. It is a new version of the PSAT, which will be more like the new SAT that will be given in the spring of this year. So you're all invited to take the test, $40, lunch times, guidance office, up to October 2nd. Thanks, Mr. Jolly. Now back to the host. Thanks, Jake, Ms. Weinberg, and Mr. Jolly. We have two pieces next about our cafeteria. The first is about the renovation that was recently finished. Let's go to Miley for the report. There has recently been a new renovation to the Staples cafeteria, so we wanted to find out more. Sure, my name is uh, Deborah Viancone. I'm the Director of Dining Services here at Westport. Well, we chose to uh, renovate it. One of our initial thoughts was uh, to do a, a food truck um, concept. Um, it didn't really fit with the, the design of the snack bar, so we kind of thought outside the box and we were thinking of um, uh, what we call the street food. The theme behind the uh, snack bar now is that it's going to be a, a rotating theme, so each week it'll be a different theme. We started out with the uh, Mexican. Um, this week we went into barbecue, which has not been very successful, so we probably won't run that again. And some of the other options or themes that we're rolling with is um, uh, Greek food, like Greek gyros and falafel and things like that. Um, we're trying to put together a plan to have sushi, um, where you can buy prepackaged sushi, like California rolls and basic rolls like that, and then also having a chef, a sushi chef, being here to make up additional types. I think the new snack bar is much more efficient now. As you can look at it, they have a much more uh, robust display. Uh, I think it's going to be a very good innovation. I think it was a very good decision, and I uh, think it's going to make the school even better. I like it. I think it's cool. It's nice variety, and uh, it looks really good. McDonald's, I think, will be a good fit. So I think uh, McDonald's and McDonald's is a big uh, influence in this town, so I think also Mr. Dodig, so putting the two together was a perfect match. To suggestions, so if any of the students or uh, faculty and staff want to suggest um, some, you know, come here to the Chartwell's office um, or speak to someone in the cafeteria, you know, one of the managers, Junior or Dave or Emily is our new chef manager. Thanks, now back to the host. Thanks, Miley. As you know, the new snack bar was recently named McDodig's. Harry found out what the students thought of the name. What up, Staples? This week's edition of Tough Questions, do you like the new snack bar name? What do you think of the new snack bar name? What is it? McDodig's? What do you guys think of the new snack bar name? Um, I, I voted for Munchbox, but I <laughs> McDodig's is going to be alright. So you, you didn't want me snake with at yeah. all? <laughs> so Aaron, what do you think of the name of the new snack bar? Do you like it? Dislike it? I like it. I think it's funny and it's a good name. So what do you think of the new snack bar name? I love it. I'm in very in support of McDodings. I think uh, that's a great name. But would you rather have Munchbox? Um... Wait, sorry, I was not prepared for this. This is the, what, whose idea was Munchbox? Whose idea was Munchbox? Whose idea was 
<laughs> now back to the host. And remember, Staples, stay gracious. Now it's time for sports. Hi, I'm Maddie. Let's start our sports report with a preview of the girls' soccer team. Last year, they were co-champions of the FCAC. They started off this year with a tough loss to Trumbull, but then reeled off two straight wins against Stanford and Ridgefield. Gus caught up with members of the team at a recent practice. the three 2015 Varsity Girls Soccer Captains, and I'm here to interview with them about thoughts on this year's season. So Charlotte, so many seniors have graduated from last year, and a lot of new people who weren't on the team last year are on the team this year, so what do you think about the team's dynamics? So we lost a lot of seniors, but we also gained a lot of players from the freshman and JV teams, a lot of new incoming freshmen. But there's really no differences in age when we're on the field. Thank you, Charlotte. And now I just want to ask uh, Elizabeth, do you have any concerns about this upcoming season? Uh, well, going into the season, we had a couple of injuries, which wasn't very good. But during preseason, the girls worked very hard in their fitness and ball fields. And I think that our strong suit will be fitness in this season. Thanks, Elizabeth. So, Lydia. You guys were the co-champions for the SCX last year, so do you think you're going to have a great chance of making it back-to-back? -back? So last year being co-champs was definitely a little bit frustrating. This year I know that we're going to try and look to make the title only ours. Well, thanks guys, and I wish you the best of luck this season, so let's go get that SCX. Yeah, back, back to, to the host! host. Thanks, Gus. Not only is our field hockey team off to a 3-0 start, but they haven't given up a goal all season, outscoring their opponents 12 to nothing. There's one freshman on the team that is already getting some varsity minutes. Here's one of her teammates to tell you about her. We sat down with freshman Ellie Fair and asked her her experiences on varsity as a freshman. How did you prepare for this upcoming season? Um, I prepared by going to the field and just practicing my stick skills and like running some of the fitness tests that he gave us. Were you, Were you scared coming to the season being the only freshman on the whole team? Um, yeah, I was nervous because all the people are like older than me, so I feel like I have to like live up to why I was on varsity and stuff like that. How have the upperclassmen been treating you? The upperclassmen have been really supportive and nice and welcoming. How do you feel about your performance on the team so far? Um, I feel pretty good, but I know I have to like, keep working hard in order to stay on varsity. How do you think the team will do this season? Um, I think we'll do pretty well this season, um, as long as we like, keep practicing. Is there anything you're afraid of for the season? Um, I'm afraid of like being like, the coaches making it like a competition of who to stay on varsity, so I know I have to like, work hard to stay on varsity. Thank you, Ellie Fair. Now back to the host. Thanks, Colleen, Jacob, and congratulations, Sally, and good luck on the season. Now let's move to football. Cooper Boardman put together a highlight package of Friday's game. Staples taking on Danbury 2015 FCAC football opening night as the Hatters travel down to Staples Stadium in Westport, Connecticut to take on the Wreckers, and we were in for a good one. Pick it up here first quarter. The Wreckers with a brand new quarterback, Andrew Speed. He finds Evan Gillen for the first completion of his career. Now handoff here to Ethan Berger, who was outstanding for the Wreckers last year. 1,260 yards on the ground, led the team. Takes not one, not two, but three Danbury defenders to take him to the turf. That sub sets up this. Speed finds Ryan Fitton, who eludes a couple tacklers, takes it into the end zone, originally called a fumble. They would, in fact, give Fitton credit for the touchdown later. Now, the record defense gets a stop. Speed rolls out to his right and finds Colin Hoy, and the Staples Wreckers were up 14-0 early in this first quarter. 
Now to the third, no scoring in the second, ensuing kickoff to open the second half. And it looked for all the world that the Wreckers were going to be the ones that were going to run away with it based on that first half. But Tyron McCrea says, not so fast. Beats a couple of tacklers, gets a block, and takes it all the way to the house. Touchdown, Danbury. 14-7. Now the Wreckers driving. Fumble here. Speed and Berger can't get that handoff to go. So Danbury recovers. Now they're driving. Marvin Payton back to pass. This one deep over the middle. Grabbed here by Messiah Crandall, makes a couple men miss, takes it down the right sideline, and he's in. We are all tied up here at 14. Now this possession, they give it to their workhorse. It's Ethan Berger, gets six or seven here. Another handoff to Berger, first down Staples. And guess what? Guess who it's going to? The correct answer would be Ethan Berger. He takes it inside the one-yard line, and Andrew Speed would follow this one up here. Quarterback sneak. We await the call from the referee. He calls it a record touchdown, and it's 21-14. Speed accounted for all three touchdowns on the day. Now to the fourth. Clock ticking down here on Danbury. Throws it up. Knocked down by Connor Adrian, and Staples seals the deal. They get the victory on opening night. Your final score, records 21 Hatters 14. You may have missed the fact that Ethan Berger had 204 yards. That's a career high for Ethan. Congratulations to Ethan and the rest of the team. And don't forget that Cooper and the rest of the sports crew here post all sorts of info and highlights of Staples Sports on their Twitter page, at Staples Sports. So we're off and rolling on the Klein Challenge. Well, maybe not everyone is off and rolling. Let's send it off to Klein and Zito for the recap. Hello Staples! Klein and Zito here once again for week two of the Klein Challenge. Zito, what's going on? A lot of changes this year, a lot of changes. Mets are in first place, Jets crunched the Colts. Yes, they did. And it didn't go so well for you it last did. week. Not the start I was looking for. Jared Ferguson went two and one. Doubled your score. I went one and two, that makes me a loser in week one, but it is still early and we will figure it out. I gotta say this, the football gods are hating on me right now. Totally hating on me. Number one, I lost to Jared. Number two, I lost my lock of the week. Saints lost to the Bucks. Number three, um, the Giants lost again. Number four, if you follow any college football, UConn actually lost on a pathetic play call. And number five, my fantasy team is 0-2. Again, the football <laughs> gods hating on me. I'm hoping it turns around. What do you got for me this week, Seats? I got somebody from your class, and yeah. you've got something in common with okay. him. Okay, let's take a look. I am here with Sam Chinitz. Sam is a senior, and yes, he is a student in my personal finance class. Sam, thanks for being on the show, buddy. Yep. Sam, what kind of football fan are you? I'm a Giants fan. Ah, a Giants fan. I guess that's what we have in common. All right, Sam, will the Giants turn it around and give me a prediction on their record for the year? Uh, I think, yeah, they're going to turn it around. Good. Uh, I think we're looking at 500, 8-8, uh, eight and eight, so. <laughs> An 8-8 eight and eight season, I, I guess turning it around is one thing, 8-8, eight and eight, not so much. Wow. Okay, Sam, give me your picks for week two of the Klein Challenge. Uh, I've got the Cardinals over the 49ers, uh, the Panthers over the Saints, and the Steelers over the Rams. Okay, I like some of those picks. I'm going in this direction. I am going with the Green Bay Packers over the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night. I am going with the Indianapolis Colts to rebound off an 0-2 start and the thrashing from the Jets last night over the Tennessee Titans. And my lock of the week. Ooh, that's a big lock, all right. Put it in the books, lock it up, the New York Football Giants will win their first game of the year on Thursday night over the Washington Redskins. Guarantee it. Lock it up. Thanks for being on the show, Sam. All right, thanks for you like me. that pick, don't you? It's a good pick. You're rooting for me. Yeah. Enjoy the games. See ya. That's it for sports. Let's send it back to the host. 
Thanks, Maddie. That's it for today. Good morning, Staples. We'll see you next week for our homecoming special. Bye.